Hi guys, today we're talking about light and fused quartz. It says the light of wavelength 589 nanometers in vacuum passes through a piece of fused quartz with an index of refraction of 1.458. The first part says find the velocity of light in fused quartz. So I've got this equation over here and it says n, which is the index of refraction, is going to equal the speed of light in a vacuum. Uh, divided by the speed of light in a medium. In this case, the medium is going to be the fused quartz. All right? Equals C, the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, divided by the velocity. All right, so I've got N is going to equal C divided by V. So we can rearrange that to say the velocity is going to equal the speed of light divided by the index of refraction. Okay, So we've got the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And we are going to divide this by the index of refraction. In this case, it's 1.458. 1. 4, 5, 8, and that is going to give us our velocity of light, the velocity of the light while tra uh, traveling through this fused quartz. All right, so when we do that, we get 2.06 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Right, so we get 2.06 six times ten to the eighth meters per second. So that's still pretty pretty darn quick. For part B it says find the associated wavelength of this light in fused quartz. So we're going to use this second equation down here and that's going to be wavelength one which is our 589 nanometers uh, times N1 which is just going to be one equals our new wavelength while uh, while the light is in the fused quartz uh, times N2, which is the index of refraction for fused quartz. Right. So we take wavelength 1, which is uh, 589 nanometers, and N1 is just going to be 1. So it's going to equal our wavelength 2 times into which we said was 1.458 and so then we just kind of rewrite that to find wavelength 2 and we say wavelength 2 uh, is going to equal 589 nanometers divided by the index of refraction uh, for fused quartz, right? And when we do that, we get 404 uh, nanometers. Alright, so 404 nanometers. So if you were to think about this, uh, you'd say initially, you know, your wavelength kind of looks like this and when it passes through the fused quartz these wavelengths um, they're going to get smaller so it's going to look more like this okay it's going to get a little bit smaller all right so for part c find the associated frequency of this light in fused quartz now this is where it gets a little bit tricky um, and it's tricky because it's not really intuitive. You would think that if the wavelength gets smaller, the frequency would increase. Because by this equation over here, uh, if you were to say the frequency is going to equal uh, C divided by our wavelength. And let's say our wavelength gets smaller, you would think the frequency would increase. Uh, however, uh, this just, I guess, isn't the case. Um, 
when light is passing through a medium, though the wavelength can be affected, uh, you know, it can get shortened down, the frequency somehow remains the same. So the important thing to take away is that, uh, and I'm just going to write this kind of in bold so you know it, um, frequency of light through a medium is the uh, same as in vacuum. All right. All right, so that's really important to remember. Um, so once you know that, then it becomes simple. Uh, then you just take your 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second and divide it by the original wavelength, 589 nanometers, and that's going to give you your new frequency, or, well, uh, the same frequency, I should say. And when we do that, we get a frequency of 5.09 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Okay, so we get uh, 5.09 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Alright, I uh, hope that helped.